We've got some Seahawks signings to get to on today's show. I'm Matthew Peterson, a host here at Chat Sports. I'm filling in for Tyler Jones, who is out west for one more day, but we'll have producer Tyler Smith join us periodically throughout the show to give us his thoughts on the signings and the draft news to get to. But let's get right into the meat and potatoes of today's show as the Seahawks extended and signed two players who were restricted free agents. Former starting quarterback Mike Jackson, a familiar face, and then linebacker John Rattengen. So Mike Jackson, I would say, is the more notable name of the bunch. The way RFAs work, by the way, it's only available for players who have occurred at least three seasons in the NFL. And basically, when their contract is up, the Seahawks or whatever team it is can make an offer to them. And other teams will have the right to match that offer. But ultimately, the ball will be in Seattle's court last. If the Seahawks do not extend a restricted free agent tender on these players, they become unrestricted free agents. So I know I know it's a bit confusing, a lot of mumbo-jumbo, but basically Seattle's got the last word when it comes to their contract and can match any qualifying offer. But, Smitty, what are your thoughts on Mike Jackson? I would say the more notable name of the two getting the RFA and coming back to Seattle for another year. Absolutely. And Mike Jackson is a guy who we saw at flourish in Seattle his first full year as a starter, making a ton of plays, obviously had that huge blocked field goal um, in the opener against Russell Wilson and the Denver Broncos. And from there, he kind of just took it and ran. But in last, last season, and toward the end of the 22, 2022 season for that matter, we saw his play kind of dip a little bit. Obviously, when Devin Witherspoon came into the fold, um, he lost his starting job. And he really was never able to recreate that magic that he had toward the beginning of the 2022 season. He was getting cooked a lot more than I saw him making plays out there. But he has flashed the ability to make plays in the past. So I thought it was worth bringing him back and seeing what he could do for depth at the cornerback position. Yeah, I, I'll echo, echo a lot of what you said. And to me, I would say maybe not a no-brainer, but cornerback is just such an important position in the NFL. It's extremely valuable to have depth at that spot. For a new head coach coming into Seattle, he's really going to like having some experience at that spot in case an injury pops up in this season, and that way things don't go down the drain here. But Jackson, two years ago for the Seahawks, when he was a starting cornerback for this team start to finish, 75 tackles, three tackles for loss, 12 pass breakups, and one interception. Compared to last year, where Devin Witherspoon, a top 10 pick out of Illinois, takes his job, and he is, you know, put back to a smaller role of 34 tackles, two tackles for loss, and five pass breakups. So the former, former fifth-round pick by the Dallas Cowboys, finding a home in Seattle, and to me, I think it's a smart play for the Seahawks to bring him back on a very cheap contract that other teams will have the opportunity to match. We'll see if anyone does it. Now, as for the exclusive rights free agents, this is a little bit simpler than RFAs. It's really simple. You make an offer, and the player has two options. Sign that offer or stop playing in the NFL. That's it. It's basically a system in place to reward teams for finding good UDFAs that don't just leave after their contract is over because richer teams come and swoop in and buy the hardly hard uh, you know scouted players by the team. So um, exclusive rights free agents: Miles Adams, McClendon Curtis, Raquan O'Neal, Joshua Odengoji, and Brady Russell. Uh, looking at this list of names here, I know not everyone's probably familiar with all of them. If I had to pick one that stood out to me a little bit that may have a real path to seeing some meaningful minutes on the field, it would probably be on the offensive line. And I'll expand on that in just a second. But if the Seahawks make any type of move here, at Seahawks today, we're going to make sure you get the, you guys get the coverage you need. So go ahead and subscribe. We're trying to get to 51,500 subscribers, and we're about 143 subs away. For me, it's the man that... The GM Schneider called out by name, saying Curtis, a name to watch at offensive guard. Of course, Seattle losing a starting offensive guard in free agency in Damian Lewis, and now they've got an opportunity to find a very cheap replacement in Curtis. When you look at Seattle's offensive line, a lot of investment has been made at the tackle position in recent early picks like Char Charles Cross and Abraham Lucas, but the interior of the offensive line, that's what everyone still has concerns, and rightfully so, over going into 2024. 
if the interior offensive line is not addressed in the draft, in the words of Tyler Smith, we riot. I won't be rioting. I think my version of rioting will be like the Seahawks fans protesting outside the Seattle Seahawks uh, front office in the movie Draft Day for trading the number one overall pick to the Browns. That's probably the extent to my riot. But if you want to get a pitchfork, go hang out with Tyler Smith. I think he'll actually get arrested for rioting. So will John Schneider draft an offensive lineman with one of the first three picks Seattle, Seattle has in the upcoming draft? Type Y for yes or type N for no. Give me your best prediction down below. Smitty? I mean, if he wants his quarterback, whether it be Geno Smith, or Sam Howell, or somebody in the draft that he picks up, like a Michael Penix or somebody. If he wants those pers that person to stay alive, he will absolutely address offensive line early in this draft because, I mean, for a Seahawks team that isn't perfect, clearly offensive line, in the, specifically the interior offensive line, is the number one need in this draft. Uh, the, you have to find somebody who likely can start an entire season for Seattle next year because I'm not entirely confident that the guys in place right now can get that job done. Lucky for Schneider and the Seahawks, this is a very good offensive line draft. So if there's a time to need help on the offensive line, this is the time to do it because you can address this need in the first, second, or third round. And I think find quality starting caliber players all the way towards the end of day two of the draft. Now, we're going to get to some draft news on your Seattle Seahawks next up on the show. But give me 60 seconds to tell you guys about our wonderful sponsor, Prize Picks. It's the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. And it's super simple, which is why it's the number one DFS. All you do is pick two to six players and then choose more or less on their projected stats. Now, you can turn $10 into 5x your money depending on how many player selections you make and whether you go four for five, three for four, four for four, whatever it may be. Now, if this does not make a lot of sense to you and I'm speaking Chinese, let me give you an exact example of what I'm talking about. For the national championship game tonight, which you can tune in for our live coverage here at Chat Sports. Producer Tyler Smith will be on the call with Nick Roloff. I'm taking the more on a UConn Husky. I'm also going to take the less on Zach Eady. I feel like Hurley's going to have a really good game plan for Purdue's big. So if you like my selections, feel free to ride with me. Have some extra bonus incentive to watch tonight's game, which for those of you on the West Coast is at a reasonable time. On the East Coast, good night. So download prize picks today and use code CLNS for a first-time deposit match up to $100. Now, I put all that information in the comments and description of today's video. But shout out to Prize Picks for supporting Seahawks today in Chat Sports. Go support them as well by downloading the app and use that code CLNS to get a deposit match up to $100. Let's talk about some help on the opposite of the offensive line, the defensive line, because Texas defensive tackle Tavondre Sweat had a Seahawks or will have a pre-draft -vis pre visit with Seattle later this week. And if the name sounds familiar or if it's been in the news, you just can't remember why, well, it's not for a good reason. Um, Tom Pelissero highlighting that Texas defensive tackle Devondre Sweat will visit with the Titans and the Seahawks later this week. But this comes after Sweat posted a $3,000 bond on Sunday because of suspicion of driving while intoxicated, his pre-draft process, and a chance to explain the situation continues. Seattle has gone down this road before where they took a chance on a defensive tackle specifically that had some question marks regarding their off-the-field antics. Malik McDowell, raise a bell to anyone, never played a snap for Seattle, second round pick, and I wonder if they're about to make the same mistake again. Uh, the concern with Sweat is he may have had some immaturity issues early on in his career at Texas. And then during the combine, that was something teams peppered him on. And he had a, I would say, fairly reasonable explanation. I was young. I was stupid. I did dumb things when I was a freshman and sophomore in college. I sure hope chat sports not hold that against me right now. But that's because I've kind of grown up and matured a little bit and, you know, don't black out on Why Not Wednesday anymore. But for Sweat... That doesn't really seem to be the case, as you would think the three weeks before the NFL draft, 
you would be on your absolute best behavior and not getting in any sort of trouble with the law whatsoever. And instead, I'm not really sure if Sweat is someone that NFL teams will look at as that's a mature, responsible adult we can count on to be ready and available for us 17 Sundays a year and not run into issues with the league and all their rules and find himself suspended. So do you want the Seahawks to draft Devondre Sweat? On the field-wise, I think he's a really good defensive tackle with a high upside because he does have a rare blend of tree stump, nose tackle type player. But even for a tree stump, he can get after the quarterback. You don't get those guys every year in the draft. Um, so let me know what you think in the comments. Smitty, what do you think? I mean, I wouldn't take him off my board. I know I, we just talked about Seattle potentially going down a similar path that they did back in 2016. But basically echoing everything that you just said and with the numbers that we'll go over in just a second, I think for a Seahawks run defense that needs somebody to plug up that middle more than ever, more than when they needed Malik McDowell back uh, almost a decade ago, I, I just wouldn't take him off my board. I think he's too talented, and he, he's a player that, that you can't miss if he ends up falling to you with one of your second or third picks. Yeah, Schneider and McDonald, they're going to have a lot of questions for um, Tavondre Sweat about what went down in Austin, and we'll find out if this is like an episode of Ballers or if this is someone they're just going to cross off their draft list. Uh, but like I was saying a few moments ago, he's a really talented player. Uh, he's ginormous. Uh, let me get that straight. If he walks into the room, he will be the largest person in the room. And he had 45 tackles, nine tackles for loss, two sacks, 31 pressures. Ladies and gentlemen, you just don't find large human beings that move as quick as Sweat does in every single draft. So for Seattle, they may feel like this is just too special of a player at a decently important position of need for us that we can pass on because of one infraction with the law before he even joined the team. Um, when you look at his RAS, I mean, usually you shoot, you shoot for green being good and red being not so good. But I, I feel like he moves and plays a lot quicker with the pads on than what he did in his underwear in Indianapolis in February. So I'm a believer that Tavondre Sweat's going to have a successful NFL career as long as he never gets in his own way. But every single year, there are a couple guys going into the draft that there are question marks related to their maturity and their professionalism. And sometimes it's no big deal. Other times, it is a big deal. And they never really see a path to the field as a result. Also, he was number one rated pro football focused defensive tackle last year. Smitty, yeah. your final thoughts on the subject? Absolutely. Uh, I think it would be disingenuous to call it apples to apples situation and, and think that he's just the same exact instance as Malik McDowell. Uh, I've spoken to people who follow the Texas football program very closely, and they've said they've heard nothing but good things. That this is a kind of a one off situation. Uh, ever since you know he had some immaturity concerns. Um, Never anything else with the law, never anything else with you know, borderline getting kicked off the team or becoming a disturbance in the locker room. Uh, I, I think this is not the same person as Malik McDowell, clearly. Uh, it, you know, it, he, this is his first instance with the law. And I think, you know, listen, he's flying to Seattle this week. He's not driving, so I think he'll be all right when it's all <laughs> said and done. And when, when the draft comes around, if he's there in round three, uh, I feel like you have to take him. He can be someone who's too big of an impact down there to, to kind of pass on if, if he gets a Seattle second or third pick. Yeah, I, I'll agree with that. I mean, at some point, talent uh, is louder than actions, and that's the case for a lot of NFL teams. So, I mean, I'm not going to put the guy on trial and say he's guilty automatically, but of course, you would think before the draft, you would just be laying low and not trying to get in the news for the wrong reason. So, We'll see if Seattle's able to put those concerns to bed when they have him come to town uh, later this week. But Devondre Sweat, a name to keep an eye out. That's going to do it for us on this edition of Seahawks Today. My first and probably last time hopping on the channel. Uh, host Tyler Jones will be back as starting tomorrow as long as he catches his red eye. So we'll have TJ back in the office, and you guys will be back to your uh, normal routine scheduled programming. But thank you for tuning in. If you like the content, consider subscribing.